thinking it might be a short night. And yeah. then uh, 36 minutes later, and a couple of busted hands, still the WBA world champion, Cal Yafai. Harsh on himself, I believe a great performance. And uh, learn a lot from that fight. Questions to the floor, gentlemen. Your hands are going to be hurting for some time to call the Cal Yafai on after that, so. Yeah, I think I've just, I've just got to get used to it now. Yeah. Um, just one of them things. Uh, you know, I, I've, after my last fight... Yeah, need I say more? <laughs> after, after my last fight, they were killing me, and um, it's just becoming a regular thing, so it's got to deal with it. Yeah, 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 very tough. Everything you expected from the champion, perhaps? Or? Yeah, yeah, um, after, after when I first put him down, was that second round? Yeah. Um, I thought this might not last that long. But yeah, I, I just took my time, but then he just soaked it all up. Um, and then once once my left hand was gone, I just had to get through it really. Cool. So Landry, what, he, kept, he kept coming and coming and coming, and um, I had to keep him up. Um, he weren't, he weren't the most, you know, strongest fight I've boxed. Never, you know, had that much power or nothing, but he was just, just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> just in my face. Yeah. But, Is that um, what yeah. you were expecting from him, Eddie, perhaps? Or? Yeah, I mean, Scott Quigg was sitting next to me and um, he boxed a guy called Hidenori Ataki uh, a couple of years ago in Liverpool. Exactly the same thing, Quigg hitting with absolutely everything. And um, down in that division, you have to look at the other fights that are being contested for World Championship at Super Flyweight. They're all extremely tough, extremely tough. Now, you often see these fights going into, into the, the late rounds, 12 rounds. And I think he's just going to, you know, he, he found it in his, in, when he won the world title. You know, he's in with the kitchen sink as well, and he's a big puncher, you know? So, it's just going to be uh, you know, probably a few more 12 rounders to come in the career. Yeah, do you feel that's done you the power of good, Cal, yeah. you know, that, that sort of contender to your, to, your th to your stasis as it was? Oh yeah, definitely, um, you know, if I got him out of there in the second round, it would have been, all, it would have been nice, a nice touch and, um, you know, knock, knocking someone out in my homecoming book. Um, I learned a lot from that, another 12 rounds in the bank. Um, against a tough opponent, and uh, I'll, I'll learn loads from it. Mm. He hasn't had, he hasn't, sorry, he hasn't had many world-class opponents outside of because in, in the division you, you go from one extreme to the other. You go from you know you sort of better than journeyman's to dom and domestic level, and then you leap to the world level like he did against Conception. So although he would have liked to have knocked him out, it's good to mix in that company and get the rounds in against a quality fighter. Coach, your thoughts as well? Happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Got the 12 rounds in. Bring him on that one. But at that level, they're all tough, aren't they? Can't blow him away. So I think it's a plus, really. He's got the 12 rounds in. Step him on to the next level. Okay, uh, Eddie, you spoke in the ring after about Gonzalez as well. Mm. That, I think that he, he, he's, he's lost his status a little bit, isn't he? But it's still a very attractive fight with or without those. Yeah, he's still the number one name in the division. And, you know, we're not in any terror much. Like I say, it's a. Uh, 22 and over, 22 and over. So, but again, you lost count. <laughs> a, yeah, a couple of fights only at that world level. So, you know, we want we want some contenders coming through. You know, I mean, even the likes we talked last week because he wants a fight is someone like Charlie Edwards, who's British champion. Who again, he wants a couple of fights uh, defending his belt, and then he wants to move on and challenge for a second world title. That could be a decent fight for Cal. But I think he's got his sights on. He feels differently. <laughs> but, but. He's got his sights on as well, those big names. But we'll get there, we'll get there very quickly because you know, I think that's the natural progression when you're a world champion in the division. Yeah, exciting times ahead, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's unlucky that he's a super flyweight, but he's lucky that he's a super flyweight because he could be a super flyweight in the dull division, which is a real tough spot to be, but actually he's a super flyweight in the electric division with some big household names. So the big fights and big paydays are out there. And um, you know, you'll get them. Carl, has their hands trouble being from the amateur days? Um, I had a couple of operations when I was amateur, but um, obviously the gloves are a lot different. Um, they're a lot smaller now, so it's just um, it's just one of the things, you know. I've got brittle hands, um, punch a bit, so. so yeah, nothing you can do now to kind of solve it. Have you spoken to anybody about it? Nothing really you can do, so just, just go on with it. <laughs> Doesn't stop you from. No, I was just sitting there. No, I was throwing punches for 12 rounds. Um, I feel like I threw a lot of punches. Um, I don't know, what, what do you reckon? Do you reckon I threw a lot of punches? Yeah, so did it. Yeah, so did it. Yeah. And you landed. You let probably landed. Well, I don't know the percentage, but <laughs> a lot. Yeah, so yeah, I just keep throwing. Just get on with it now. I'm getting, I'm getting experience under me now. 
you know, I've got, I'm 22 fights in and um, I'm just getting that experience where you just get on with it, you just got to keep throwing punches no matter what. Is the Gonzalez fight the one that you definitely want then? So is it anybody you've got a belt? He's the biggest name, so he's the one that you got to chase, really. He's the biggest name on um, is he the, the biggest? Yeah, money. of course, yeah, and that's a fight that could take place. <laughs> yeah, it's a fight that could take place in the states as well. You yeah, know, and Cal wouldn't mind fighting in the states. We've already talked to uh, Joe with Encarjus's team. He's the IBF champion, and um, we're in talks also with the WBC champion who beat Gonzalez. Although they're going to rematch, they want us to help him out. Um, but I think the IBF champ. I I'd like to see one more fight and then unify. Um, and I believe he can beat some of those champions as well now. And I believe he can beat all of them in time. But Carl, Gonzalez you, is the standout man. Carol, do you think Gonzalez is on the slide? Do you think that fight was a bit of an anomaly, or do you think he's kind of he's coming to the end of that sort of long run? No, I, I thought he won the last fight. I thought it was a close fight, and uh, I thought he nicked it. But um, you know, maybe he's not what everyone thinks he is at Superfly. Um, maybe he's not big enough and strong enough. You know, early time will tell. Gets him with me. Obviously, I'm a big, strong Superfly, so. We'll see how he deals with that. He's got a big profile in America, obviously, I'm being on HBO and stuff. Be, do you wonders as well over there, beating him? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd travel to America, no problem. Did you box there at all as an amateur? Pardon? Did you box in America? Yeah, 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 yeah. Three times. Did you win them all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even if he didn't, he wouldn't have told you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, he, he's, he's a little journalist, isn't he? He's a little journalist, isn't he? Ron, Ron, Poppy, no, anyway, here we go. That, that, no, that was the only one. Yeah. That was the only one. I went, I went on a tour with GB, and a box free, and then the, the return when they come here, and the dinner show in London. Mm -hmm. Eddie, uh, just a fight. Um, the only few rounds before, Cal's going to see him off pretty quick. Um, you know, the, the guy offered a lot of resistance. Do you think that showed his world class level? Like the mentality, you know, stay calm and just. Uh, yeah, and very accurate. I mean, he was under pressure. Cal, Cal won every round virtually, and he was under pressure every round. So uh, you have to give the uh, Marinaco a lot of credit because I knew he'd be tough. But I didn't think he'd be that tough. Yeah. Um, but I thought Cal's composure was excellent. Got ragged a couple of times, got caught a couple of times, but sometimes against opponents like that, it's the only way you're going to knock them out is trading with them. Um, and he was starting to tire a little bit towards the end of Renaka, but he was just, in the end, it was just like, leave him alone, let him do his thing. <laughs> you know? And uh, I think Cal realised that after probably eight or nine rounds. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, maybe just slow down a little bit here and just, you know, this is probably going to go 12. But all part, all part of the learning process. He hasn't really boxed anyone like that before. Conception was a lot trickier than Marinaka. He was just, Marinaka was just straight up and down, just relentless pressure. Yeah. Is he planning on making his second defence at the bar card or anything? Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, you know, you have the option, really, Cow has the option to box in Birmingham and box on the pay per view cards as well. Yeah. So, you know, I think looking at his hands, he's going to have um, end of the rest of May off and June, and then probably get back in to training in, you know, July and look to box end of September, something like that, or middle of September. I'd like him to box twice uh, this year, really, but obviously hands permitting. Um, so. Did you watch River before the fight? No. Nah. I was getting my hand dropped. So I'll be at home and I get home. I'll have to watch it. I'll try and catch it on YouTube if someone uploads it. If anyone's watching, if you can upload it or give me a shout on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch it. Did he tell you he was good? <laughs> but everyone talk. But what I did, I was sitting there, I just finished getting my hand dropped and um, I, just went, I just went on Twitter and just sit, just seen what everyone was saying. So, um, very good performance, very good performance. Good fight. From what I read, it was a good performance. Yeah, so. good. Yeah, very happy. Brings you nice to see the rest of the card as well. I mean, Davies was there as well, didn't he? he was Davies, only deserves, going a lot, yeah, Davies deserves a lot of credit, you know, and I think, again, Max put a great game plan together for Gamal because he kept nice and calm yeah. under the pressure. And actually, in the end, after the first couple of rounds, he started getting into it. I think he decided, I'm too strong for him. Started to unload on him, and that's when it, when it showed. But, yeah. you know, it's a lot of pressure on that fight because everyone expected him to win. But there was a lot of support for Sean Davis as well. So yeah. although it was the Battle of Brum, you know, Gamal is expected to go well beyond those levels, but he still have to overcome those hurdles. But I'd like to see him move on, challenge for British and European titles this year. I think, I think, I think Gamal's really coming on, really yeah. coming on. Yeah, can you see um, Gamal maybe reaching the ascension that this gentleman here has done? In, you know, yeah, I, I, I believe Gamal can go and win world titles. I mean, you know, there's, you've got to look at guys like, um, you know, Hugo Ruiz, 
who gave him McDonald a uh, box for the WBC world title. I wouldn't, you know, I know Gamal's not ready for that fight, but I wouldn't be adverse to sling him in, in that kind of fight soon because, you know, he can punch and he's very strong and he's technically improving all the time. And, I, you know, I mean, when you talk about, he's, he's got another year before he fights the world titles. But let's get British and European first. But he's really, really improving. Really improving and very entertaining to watch as well. Of course, when we talk about stoppages as well, Sam Eggington is the new European champion. So yeah. it, for a little while, it was a very nervous how that fight ended. Yeah, it? I actually, so, I, I had him three or four rounds up. I don't know. But Sky had him one round up. And the, the scores were three rounds up, five rounds up, five rounds up for Eggington. I don't know. I thought he was like three or four rounds up watching it. Um, but it was a brutal knockout. I mean, it was one of the worst knockouts I've seen. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm in for a treat when I get on. Yeah, yeah, he knocked him out standing up and then hit him with a he was sat on the right, house, sat on the ropes with yeah, right hand, yeah. left hook, whilst he was unconscious. Oh, so, I like that, man. You always worry <laughs> about those things. Though. Yeah, definitely. No, no I mean, and Sam did as well. It was, a bad, you know, it was a very, very bad knockout and he, you know, it took him a while to regain consciousness, but thankfully he was alright. The Sam Eggington story rolls on. Good night for Birmingham. We all go into our families, and obviously, is Sam ready for knocking on the door for it? Got to be now. Well, I think time. again, you know, a defence of the European, maybe one or two, and then you get to a stage where there's no, there's a point in no return. You've got to go and change for world titles. It's like Cal was, you know, he did, he did his apprenticeship, change for a world title, and then the same thing will happen. Defend the world title a couple of times, unify. That's what happens, and it's up to the fighter if they can keep raising their levels and improving. Can you see Sam doing that? Can you see this rocky story? He's just 23 going years to, old. Going I mean, to the yeah, top he's of the 23. Level. He's improving as well. You know, talk about Gamal improving. So Sam Eggington. Now he just used to be a guy who just used to come in and have a tear up. Now he's actually he's, he's boxed three back to back technically strong boxers: Rodriguez, Eggington, uh, Gavin, and Malinaji. They're all the wrong style for him. Do you know what I mean? But he's overcome him. So he's 23, he's only a baby as well. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, talk, just, just briefly touch on Frankie as well with his homecoming tonight and so on. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, Frankie's Frankie, isn't he? I mean, yeah. But he, I mean, he's we, you, we've all fell in love with Garrido, though, I think. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the thing is with Frankie is, is how, how, how many times do you want to say, I'm going to oh, I'm gonna do this next time, or I'm going to be 10 stone 4 next time? It's all very well saying. Oh, he's got so much talent. He's not fulfilled his ability, and this and that. But he's yeah. 31 years old. You know, he needs he needs to decide what he wants to do in his life. And it might be too late to take it as seriously as he should have previously when he had the opportunities. But you know, listen, he's he's a good kid at heart, but he, he makes mistakes. Yeah. Take himself seriously. He's got ability. If he can't, it'll be the end of the road for him. Can he correct that? Can he correct that with this? That's only, only an answer that he can give you. Okay. All right. All right, guys, thank you very much. Cheers, thank Brilliant, you. Thank you.